Okay. All right, so uh, uh, so yeah. this is actually a uh, MA. So what we're going to do is an MAA uh, yeah. prior to cert tax, uh, sorry, uh, cert uh, Y90 segmentectomy. Uh, next slide. So it's a 75 year old female with pancreatic uh, neuroendocrine metastatic uh, lesion to segment 8. Uh, history of pancreatic uh, <coughs> neuroendocrine tumor status post pancreatectomy and Wimbles procedure. Uh, she had a Y90 therapy back, way back in 2006, which she actually did quite well from. Um, and then basically on surveillance imaging, there are three small, less than one centimeter, all in segment eight uh, lesions that are new. She has a history of hypertension, as you can see there, coronary disease CHF. Uh, her labs and, and everything look pretty good for, for Y90. Uh, next slide. Uh, so here's some view of this MRI, and you can see sort of the red arrows pointing to all the little lesions in segment eight. Uh, and so, uh, next slide. Next slide. Is that the no, there's. Okay, so basically, 75 year old woman with uh, metastatic pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor uh, with prior radio levelization. Uh, recent surveillance imaging again shows that segment eight uh, lesions. You know, basically, treatment options for her chemotherapy, surgical resection, transplant, ablation, uh, Y90 radio embolization. Uh, also, we can just continue to watch her and see. Um, but uh, I think in discussion our multidisciplinary tumor board, uh, we decided to do one radio embolization, and we're going to try to keep it as focal to segment eight uh, as possible. I don't think there's any reason to sort of uh, blast the entire right lobe of her liver again. Um, so uh, I think that's the last slide. So, so this is a, a, a patient that I treated uh, five years ago. And as everyone knows, neuroendocrine tumor, you can go quite a long time uh, after treatment. So our, our, as Rahul talked about, our importance is to try and get um, as much preserved liver function from our therapy as possible. And so it was a little mislabeled. It's not a segmentectomy, but a subselective injection. Right. Uh, the, the original plan is to actually try and use resin microspheres. Uh, there's a lot of echo if you guys could kind of tone down the volume. Just turn here or something. Um, but uh, is to give resin microspheres, because that's what we used previously, and that's what we use on a lot of our neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, but you'll see that we may actually change our, our agent to glass microspheres because there seems to be a lot of slow flow uh, in this uh, right hepatic angiography because of the uh, uh, large flow to the spleen. So if you play the first run, so this is, uh, we catheterized the celiac and we performed the angiography here, and you can see that there's differential flow, oh, yeah. and there's actually quite sluggish flow going into the hepatic artery. And you can see that the spleen is actually quite large here. So we selected the right hepatic uh, artery. And you can see that there are multiple uh, lesions throughout. But what we saw in the MRI that really correlated was segment 8. But the flow is, this is real time, the flow is actually not very brisk here. So the option is to treat potentially in a low bar fashion, uh, again with the, with the surtex or to subselect out segment eight and maybe use a, a less symbolic uh, agent such as the glass microspheres with therosphere. So we're actually set up here now to do a cone beam CT. We use cone beam CT on almost all of our interventional oncology cases. And we also have software that allows us to segment out the tumors uh, and then the software will uh, show exactly which vessels are feeding the tumor. It's called EmboGuide from Philips. Any questions? All right, so we'll set up uh, our, our yes. cone beam CT here. Yeah, so the point of this procedure is more so just to show the setup of the, uh, how we go from a sort of regular angiography to cone beam. So what we've done here is we sort of tucked in the left arm. Um, our nurses are great about uh, flipping sort of the right arm is up and uh, we are set. So I'm gonna make sure the image is centered pretty well here. Uh, centered pretty well. And then we're gonna basically set up for the cone beam. And so see, it's gonna, Come around. Okay. So um, I don't know if you guys saw where this started and ended, but actually, could you show where the II is relative to the patient's left arm here? Yeah, so this is basically where the start position is. It's called the open trajectory from uh, Phillips. So basically, the 90 degrees that are open in the spin are uh, over here on the left side as opposed to the right side. It allows us to clear more of the right uh, and also um, allows us to keep the left arm down in position as having to move the left arm. Um, so we're going to step out and we're going to sort of do our uh, spin. Um, you can see there's no issue in terms of the acquisition of the combium CT here with radial axis. Okay, go ahead and breathe.
What, what uh, concentration dilution do you use for cone beam CT? Uh, we use full strength ISOVIEW 300. We don't have any issues uh, with beam hardening artifact from the, the contrast. So we don't, we don't dilute our contrast unless the patient has some type of uh, renal impairment. So uh, this is actually set up to do dual phase. Uh, but we want to cut down the amount of DAP to, to patients. And so we do, we've done it in a single acquisition or a late arterial phase. Uh, whereas it, you can set it up to do an arterial and then a delayed phase, and it automatically resets, and then you would do another acquisition immediately afterwards. So you only do one injection. Sounds great. Here. Hey, so we're just setting up for our final cone beam CT. I just wanted to mention, we, we're in position now. If you could play the last run, Cynthia. So you can see that uh, we... If you can see the image, the EmboGuide image, it really uh, cut down our, our procedure time to get subselective. We know exactly which branch we're going into. We got into the segment eight feeder, and so we're just going to confirm with cone beam CT. But we're, uh, I forgot to mention before, the system that we're using here is the Sarah radial catheter, and then we use a direction 2.4 French uh, with our Fathom 018 wire, and very easy to navigate into the uh, segment eight branch. Uh, and so we're just going to finish with a cone beam CT here and uh, then send out for our dose and inject RMA. So nothing more to really see here in, the, in, in room two.